I'm running out of time to get this video out, uh, as I said I would do a while ago, uh, even having someone directly prompt me to put the video out the other day. So here we go, another list of my best guns. This time, it's my best gun for each class in Battlefield 1 in late 2020. I'll then update it when we get to 2021 and see what's different. It's nothing serious, just a bit of fun. As ever, it's purely my own opinion, my best weapon at the time. And the idea is that you leave your list of best weapons in the comments below to see what everybody likes. This time around, I wanted to get you to some alternatives to the obvious, to the meta, or to what I've previously listed, but in doing so, I actually found genuinely my best new assault weapon. I've been showcasing it since the start of the video, I totally slayed out with it, and we'll be covering it first in the assault class. This video is brought to you by the Board of Awesome from the epic people that support the channel on Patreon, and the current goal for the channel is to hit 60k subscribers before the end of 2020, currently sitting at 58k, and with around 80% of my views recently coming from non-subscribers, we can definitely achieve that. So if you're new here or want to see more, hitting that subscribe button will be awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Assault Class. This is the Annihilator Trench. It's a close range rapid fire SMG and the map that came up in the rotation for me to gather footage with it was Rupture. And I thought, oh man, could this be much worse? A big wide open map with very few areas for close quarters fights and sparse decent cover. I was dreading it. And it was Conquest, so I had so some doubts I'd even get enough footage in one game to fill out the section. Well, 59 kills later, having absolutely fried whole squads at a time, I was absolutely delighted I decided upon this weapon for the video. I don't know how, but I had seemingly forgotten just how good this gun is, up until I started planning this video out. I stumbled back across it, saw I had a few service stars on it, and had this vague notion of its power return, and then this game, man, it just reconverted me. It's incredible. The hip fire is my mind-blowing. Like, the range of it is crazy. If you can hold it steady, utilize that hip fire, and react quickly, you're going to melt people. You're looking at a rate of fire of 830 rounds per minute. For reference, the much-lauded Hellregal fires at 650, the SMG-08 at 770, and yeah, you pick options like those for versatility or overall magazine capacity, which is crazy, by the way. I will give them that. But what they don't have is the Annihilator's raw damage output. It just beats them there. Not only statistically, but in actual normal, replica play if you play in the right manner. And while something like the Automatico fires at 900 RPM, the Annihilator does a little bit more damage per round. So although the Annihilator has inferior recoil and spread stats, it has a faster optimal time to kill and superior range. Sure, there's five less rounds to utilize when compared with the Automatico, but if you can deal with that extra spread and recoil, you're killing faster, and I like that. And this is why I go for the Trench, because that insane hip fire plays into its other strengths. More spread and recoil, Okay, sure, but look at the gameplay. The hip fire is ridiculously reliable, so I'm only ever aiming down sight when I absolutely have to. And burst firing is almost mandatory for those ranges anyway when I'm aiming down sight, so most of the time, kind of why bother? Seriously, just hip fire. Select the gun, get to a close range area, and mow people down. You're only getting 20 rounds per reload, so be prepared to duck and dive, listen for movement near you, and react quickly. But yeah, it's a rush. It forces you to play fast, and if you're good at it, it can create some pretty epic moments. I had a blast with it. I'm so pleased I've rediscovered it. You don't see people using it all that often, and I'm looking forward to continuing to utilize it. While so many other people run around with the same old thing they have done for however many years, the Annihilator is my personal choice for the best assault gun in BF1 in late 2020. Moving on, it's the Medic class, and on this occasion, I've selected the M1907 SL Factory. And I know for certain that it isn't going to be one of the weapons that many imagine seeing on a list like this. And while I did say I was going for some more alternative options, options on this occasion, I genuinely have this as my go-to medic weapon these days. Previously, I was often going for the auto-loading extended, and I do still think that's an excellent option, but for now, the SL Factory just remains my comfortable selection. And rather than go through a whole long thing about how it lines up with the other guns and whatever, instead let's break it down to three key points. The first one being that it's simply good enough at most of the important aspects of how I play. It's fairly close to mid-range orientated, a solid rate of fire of 300 RPM, 21 rounds per reload, and a jack of all trades kind of outlook. It's not an ultimate min-max kind of selection, but it's reasonably versatile. Point two, why am I picking this over the generally much more popular SL Sweeper variant? Well, I'm going to explain this in as basic a fashion as I can. The stat bars in Battlefield can be vague and misleading. Basically, when you analyze the actual in-depth stats coded into the game, the Sweeper is a worse 
gun than the other two variants, simply sporting full auto functionality, which is the main reason it's generally chosen by people. And if you can fire the SL in semi-auto at anywhere around its max of 300 RPM, while maintaining accuracy, then you may as well ignore the sweeper the vast majority of the time. The trench variant has far better hip fire, so you can go all in if you want that, or if you're like me and you want something that can be used solidly for hip fire or aiming down sight for better range capability, then you go for the factory variant, which also actually has better recoil and spread decrease, regaining accuracy more quickly between shots, and thus you can overall be more accurate because you're not forced to use that max rate of fire as with the sweeper. You can slow it down or go as quick as you want or whatever, depending on the range and how little spread you want. And so although the sweeper has slightly better initial spread stats for example, this is overall pretty much invalidated by the factory having better spread decrease, better recoil, and just overall better versatility. And so point three, very quickly, does the SL factory have anything that my old favorite, the autoloading extended, doesn't have? Yes, both have strengths and weaknesses when compared with each other. But the overall key point to take away is, when it comes to time to kill, the autoloading is superior between 0 and 22 meters, and then 55 meters plus, but at 55 meters plus, you should really just be using a different gun anyway if you're finding you're having that engagement a lot of the time, whereas the SL factory is better for time to kill between 23 and 54 meters, more so that mid-range. So choose whichever you prefer for your playstyle, where these two guns are concerned, or whatever your actual top pick is, remember to leave it in the comments. But yeah, that's a quick look at why the M1907 SL Factory is my best medic gun in Battlefield 1 in late 2020. Next up, we have the support class, and I've gone for the Huot Automatic Low Weight, and some people are sat there right now calling me absolutely crazy. But rather than go all in depth, let me say that I had someone come to my stream the other day and politely question why I was using the Huot, as they, like many others felt or feel that it's a terrible gun. Well, 20 minutes or so later, I felt like I'd shown exactly why this isn't the case. I went slaying. The Huot is a misunderstood beast, a beast I also initially misunderstood when I first used it. Only 26 rounds on a slow rate of fire? Why? Well, because it's a laser when used correctly, in a game where a lot of people struggle with the spread of a lot of the weapons, giving you a considerable advantage if you use it properly. It doesn't do the highest damage in the world or anything like that, but it's consistency in gun form. Try not to start firing before aiming in, remain stationary when possible, and you can hit the target at almost any range with truly excellent regularity. Let's compare it with the much more popular M1917 MG low weight, which actually is a gun that's much more highly criticized for being easy to use, or OP, or a noob gun, and other such silliness which actually isn't true at all. But the Huot, the gun that so many think is useless, actually kills faster than the M1917 at all relevant ranges literally, all the way out to like 110 meters or whatever. Not to mention that if you go to somewhere like sim.gg and compare the stats of the two, it's an absolute sea of green for the Huot, compared to red for the M917, indicating just how many stats the Huot beats the M1917 on. Now yeah, the M1917 has a way bigger ammo capacity, and that's important for sure, but currently I favor the Huot's overall better stats and superior time to kill, and so rather than comparing it with every LMG, because this isn't that kind of video, let me sum it up by saying, if you don't want to have constant close range battles as support, and instead go for mid to long range and use this gun properly, you'll have a super accurate and consistent LMG to absolutely map people with. And that's why the Huot Automatic Low Weight is my pick for the best support gun in BF1 in late 2020. And finally we come to the Scout class, and for this one I actually really did go looking for something genuinely different from my usual picks. This ended up being accidentally my only one that is really alternative from my common selections, because I just found the Annihilator to be so good for Assault in the end, but I made sure to try things out and pick something that genuinely fits the bill of being my best late 2020 gun for Scout, and I landed on the beautiful Type 38 Arisaka Infantry. This is the close range infantry bolt action in BF1. Not the SMLE, not the Martini Henry, not the Ross, it's the Arisaka, but with certain caveats and considerations. First off, the Arisaka's one shot kill sweet spot starts at a closer range than the SMLE or the Ross, so that's an easy explanation there. Usually you want to bolt action so you can one shot people, or alternatively, at close range, to body shot them and then finish them with a the sidearm. So yeah, the Arisaka takes the cake here for that basic close range capability. So now what about comparing it with the Martini Henry? Well the sweet spot of that gun and the Arisaka actually both start at 30 meters, and the Martini's extends further out to 80 meters compared with the Arisaka 62. So if you want that, then go for the Martini. But if just a really close range is what you're going for, then the Arisaka might be your go-to because it doesn't 
doesn't have to literally reload after every shot, unlike the Martini Henry, giving you a rate of fire of 62 rounds per minute compared with the Martini Henry's 24, which means it can pick up consecutive kills more quickly, and it's better if you do want to double body shot people, or say you miss your shot, or hit an arm or whatever, your next chance to kill that person isn't far behind. And also the Arisaka has better muzzle velocity, so pick what works for you, but that's why for me, the Type 30 Arisaka Infantry is my best gun for the Scout class in Battlefield 1 in late 2020, and yes, I am picking infantry variants over scope variants at the minute. In BF1, the infantry variants are absolutely lethal. And so be sure to let me know what your list is. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hitting those like and subscribe buttons would be awesome. All the links to my social media, including Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and all of that are in the description and my pinned comment. And with all of that said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time. Laters. This also obviously negates the server browser, so when people are trying to pick a server to play a certain map or certain few maps in the rotation, or play a server that's got lots of people in it, or play on a server that gives them a good ping, whatever it may be, we lose control of that with this system in place.